All right, gang. As promised, as promised, I got Mr. Joe Stump, guitar extraordinaire, on the phone with me tonight. Joe, how you doing, man? Good. Always good. I live a, like I tell everybody, I live a charmed life, so, you know, I can't complain. Awesome, awesome. Well, Joe, why don't you um, give us a little history, man? Take us back to the beginning. Um, when did you first pick up a guitar, man? And when did you know that music is what you wanted to do? Um, I played a little when I was 10, and then I was like, you know, I was like, okay, this sucks, I'm not into this, you know, just playing on like a rented guitar, you know, taking lessons from some old guy. And then um, and then I picked it back up when I was like 13, and then, um, you know, and then, you know, immediately start, started to try, try to play rock and, and hard rock and stuff, and that's when, um, and sl- you know, very early on I knew, you know, I was hooked, and then by... Um, by 14, I knew I wouldn't do anything else. Oh, awesome, awesome, man. So now, yeah, so, so so it's been you know it's been quite a while. Yeah, yeah, wow. So, but uh, you know, you've been in bands like Exorcism, Raven Lord, Holy Hell, uh, the list goes on. Plus, you have what, about a dozen solo projects. Well, I got like a bunch of yeah, maybe like 12 solo records out, not counting compilations. And, you know, when I had, like, a power metal band, Joe Stump's Reign of Terror, so I did, like, four records with that. And then, you know, and then all the other... I, I, you know, I, I did some live shows with the Ravenwood thing, but I never played on the record. And, you know, and then I did the... Uh, and, of course, Holy Hell, and then I did the um, Exorcism record as well. So, you know, lo- lots of, you know, my dance card is always usually full. Cool, man, cool. Now, uh, you know, I usually ask about the songwriting... Uh, but there's got to be a difference when you're in a band as opposed to a solo project, correct? Oh yeah, like when I'm writing for an instrumental record, it's a completely it's a different vibe um, than you know than if I'm writing something for Holy Hell or you know or on ex- in the Exorcism thing, I really didn't do much writing, but um, but you know it's different if I'm writing an instrumental that you know I mean even though my instrumentals have um. You know, they have melodies and they have riffs, and it's just, you know what I mean? Like, like granted, you know, some are different than others, but generally speaking, they take on, like, some of the traditions of, like, you know, a regular metal song kind of format where you got some riff action, and then you have, like, you know, you know, a very definite theme and melody and stuff. So, so um, but, but it is a different mindset, and it's a different um, vibe when I'm writing something that's going to be an instrumental as opposed to... Um, a band thing, and usually I know right away. I don't like all of a sudden sit down and say, "Okay, I'm going to write an instrumental." I mean, I just sit down, start. I just you know go into my workroom, start playing like any moron, and then stuff starts popping out. And it could be a vocal tune, it could be a you know, it could be a you know a piece of like you know like some kind of little classical thing that I'm putting together that's going to end up in the middle of a section of one of my solo tunes or whatever. Cool, man. Cool. So on your latest. Revenge of the Shred Lord, man. How would you describe that sound to people? Um, well, I mean, anybody, it's not like it's a departure from, like, you know, any of my other records. It's like, oh, it's much different than, you know, Guitar Dominance, my first record from 1993. I mean, you know, there there are all elements in there. I mean, revenge, uh, of course, you know, you make records for that long and you play for that long. You hope to be... You know, each record, everything goes up a bunch of notches, whether it's the production value or, you know, my playing in general or or the compositions or, you know, you know, the tone of my hands and all those different types of things. So, um, but, you know, re- um, Revenge is, um, you know, very, very, you know, dark sounding record, you know, like it seems like uh, in, in even the new record, you know, the new solo record I'm in the midst of recording now is even darker and heavier so revenge is very classical very very classically influenced very dark you know very heavy on some of the stuff and um and, but uh, but i mean like it, it has a lot of the same elements all my records have where where you know you have some strong mel- melodies and you have some cool riffs along with all the um insanely fast guitar nonsense going on very cool very cool so now would you say you've grown or evolved uh, since the beginning, then uh, you know until nowadays. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course, of course, you know, there are like some. T- you know, my playing's like really come a long way. It's not like I was a bum, but if you listen to my fir- very first, you know, 
record. Um, you know, my playing's a lot, you know, of course, of course, after, you know, playing, you know, making records for that many years and like traveling all over the world and like playing tons of shows and tours and all that kind of stuff. Of course, you know, my overall playing is up quite a few. No- I mean, my playing's are up a few notches than it was, you know, if you listen to Revenge and then somebody listens to my new record, you know, I'm up a few notches now because I, you know, I'm constantly playing. So it's not like it, um, ever stops. So, um, I'm always trying to improve on, you know, on my craft and stuff. But um, but there's some great, you know, this. it's not like there's not some killer tunes on my very first record. A lot of people, you know, look to that one and really like a lot of the tracks on that. You know, even though my, you know, even though my writing and playing has um, obviously um, developed since then. Right, right. So, like, with each, uh, with each new project, you, you try to push yourself that little bit further. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, it's just if you, if you're deep into something and you're constantly working at it, you know, obviously there's going to be improvement all the time. That's one of the gratifying things, you know. Granted, it's nice to, um, you know, it's nice to make my living as a musician. I can't complain about that. But I mean, that's the other, you know, the other, the other sat, you know, very satisfying thing is that you're constantly growing and getting better. Cool, cool, man. It doesn't matter how long you've been at it. Very cool, very cool. So, Joe, who would you say are your personal influences man oh well you know anybody that listens to my records it's very very easy to set easy to tell because you know my my favorite guys i all i you know it's not like i'm reinventing the wheel i just channel the um you know the, the influence of like my heroes so of course i love richie blackmore i love ingrid malmstein of course you know i love uli john roth and gary moore and um michael schenker I love, you know, even though on Revenge, in Revenge, I don't have any kind of blues tinge things, but I also love, you know, I love Hendrix, and you know, I love classical music. I love Bach. I love Vivaldi. You know, Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, Mozart. You know, um, you know, Paganini. Different, you know, Baroque stuff, Romantic stuff. I mean, I like that kind of stuff as well. Um, but I love all kinds of strings of metal. I love, you know, I love Merciful Fate and, you know, King Diamond. I love Accept, you know what I mean? Cool. And I like all the players. Like, I like Andy LaRock. I like Hank Sherman. I like Wolf Hoffman, you know. I like Walter Giardino from uh, Argentinian band Rata Blanca. You know, I, I, I mean... I mean, I, and I also love some fast players, like whether it's Michelangelo Badio or Chris Bellateri, you know, back many years ago. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, you know, my core influence of guys is um, are really the first guys I mentioned, you know, those the European hard rock masters and metal masters, whether it's Ingve and Blackmore and Uli and Michael Schenker, Gary Moore, um, you know, rest and soul. Um, and, uh, yeah, and and but but like I said, I love all different kinds of schools of metal. Like on my new record, I have um, you know some heavier things that are kind of you know I could have like a power metal thing. I could have a thing that has like some extreme metal and black metal elements in it. I could have some things that have like some you know some thrash and death metal elements to it. You know what I mean, riff wise. So so I mean I like all different types of stuff. Very cool. Very. But that, that, yeah, then I could have, like, you know, on the same record, I could have, like, you know, maybe a bluesy kind of Hendrix or Frank Marino kind of thing. So, so you know, I like all different types of things. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. You know, and it never seems to uh, uh, surprise me, like, how, how many metal guitarists are influenced by classical music? You, that, yeah, well, that's, that's awesome. That, you know, I mean, Richie Blackmore and Uli John Ross kind of set the tone for that, that many years ago, and then of course Ingve really took the, you know, the classical influence to a much higher level technically, and like a much, you know, um, much more extreme as far as content wise goes. So you know, just following the footsteps of uh, my heroes, dude. Uh, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, you you rank right up there with them, brother. Well, that's very nice of you. You know, I wouldn't go that far, but, you know, I'm not so bad. <laughs> you know? So, Joe, man, when you're not writing, touring, rehearsing, what do you do for a day off, man? What do you enjoy doing? Um, um, let's, I mean, you know, what am I, I usually, um, on days off, like, I mean, I really don't, have, sadly, I don't have any hobbies. I guess, like, you know, one, you know, one thing I enjoy, I have, you know, I have a couple of nice cars. I'm, you know, I'm a, you know, a- anything that I like, not that I have a lot of sports cars by the means, but I got a couple of older, older Corvettes. So, um, oh, cool. 
you know, so yeah, like I gotta, you know, so I really like, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm like so focused on guitar and music that it was like, okay, you know, I, I, I got a my first core that like back, you know, years ago, I want to say seven or eight years ago, and then I just, got, you know, I just got another older one, like a, you know, a C3, and they, you know, one of the Stingrays, like, you know, last year. So, oh, wow. so I mean, I, you know, I, I, and it's not like I work on them or anything like that. I'm like a chick when it comes to cars, but I got like, you know, I got guys that work on them and. You you know, and, 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 you know, so, so I enjoy, enjoy driving those and, 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 and stuff. If I had to pick like some kind of hobby, you know, um, and, and I'm, I mean, you know, I'm like, you know, I love all those different, you know, I'm kind of like, I wouldn't say I'm a craft beer and food in a fishing and out, but more of a craft beer enthusiast. So I love all like kind of, you know, yeah, I, you know, I, 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 you know, like any rock guy, I like to drink, and you know, I like to drink good, good. Beer. You know, I'm fairly a simple man. You know what I mean? You know, I like guitar, I like beer, I like chicks with, you know, you know, and, and fast stuff. cars. <laughs> exactly, and, and nice cars. You know, it's it, like a cliche and somewhat shallow, but um, but you know, all the other thing is, I'm from New York, so um, you know, I love the Yankees, so I kind of, you know, I watch the Yanks during uh. Or I have for many years, you know, it's the post Derek Jeter era now, so I'm a little sad about that. You know, all my favorite guys are gone. But I mean I mean but otherwise I don't have like massive amounts of hobbies. I like to travel and I like to go on vacation and you know, like anybody likes likes. But um but I'd say the only thing outside of like guitar, you know, maybe the cars a little bit, but you know. But for me, you know, I you know, I love playing and I and you know, I mean I do it like ninety percent of the time, you know. Oh wow, wow. Yeah, like like my, you know, like almost all. But you know, even when I go, I just came back. I was away for a couple of days in New Orleans on vacation, trying not to kill myself with booze. <laughs> and um, oh yeah, you know it's like a struggle down there. You know, I go on vacation. I I go on a vacation and I need a vacation from that. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, next thing you know, it's like six thirty in the morning. I'm in some bar, you know some bar drinking absence. Um, but what was I going to say? Um, but. But, you know, even when I'm on vacation, my guitar comes with me, and I'll still, you know, get in like an hour or two, you know, um, before I go out and bang around the city, whether, you know, whether I'm there or back home in New York or whatever. Very cool, very cool, man. So, Joe, like, in all your years doing this, man, what would you say is your most memorable moment? Um, a lot of people have asked me that. I mean, I don't have, like, one memorable moment. I have, like, there's different kinds of things that are like meaningful like and and nice like 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 you know granted you know playing it like with holy hell like i i had a chance to um to play some very big big festivals lots of people you know whether it was the hellfest or uh, masters of rock and the check or the gods of metal or you know or like one time you know we we're on a package with man of war and rhapsody and we were playing like sport halls and arenas right right cool so Let's let's uh. Um... So so that portion of it was cool, but then the other thing is like something else that comes to mind is one time I was playing a, a solo show in London, you know, when I was playing in London, and it was a very small crowd, you know what I mean, just like you know a handful of guys, maybe twenty something guys that were all like hardcore fans of mine, you know. And they all came to the show, and then afterwards, you know, it was like one of the places where they had like a pub downstairs, like an English pub downstairs, and they had a little rock room upstairs. So after the show, like, you know, I hung out with all the guys and signed stuff, and, you know, a lot of them, you know, were fans of mine for, like, years and years that had never seen me because I never came to the U.K. as a solo artist. So stuff like that also, you know, kind of sticks with me, you that, know? That's cool, man. And, you know, and it's... It, it might be like the smaller venues and, and, you know, doing stuff like that that stick with the fans even more. Oh, yeah. Me, I'm really easy. Like, I don't care whether I'm playing for 10,000 people or, or, you know, 20 people. You know what I mean? For me, it's always fun. You know, I, I, I mean, I, you know, like, like, why do it? If granted, like, you know, can touring or whatever or traveling beat you up? Yeah, but I mean, if it's not fun, like, why do it? It beats the hell out of work. Awesome, man. Awesome, awesome. So, Joe, let's take it the other way, man. Do you have any Spinal Tap moments you'd like to share with us? Spinal Tap moments. I'm trying to think. I probably do. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of something that happened to me that was, um, like, me personally, you know? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I'll have to give it some, 
you know, I'll have to get uh, like nothing right off the right off the bat. You know what I mean? That that really, um, you know, I mean, I mean, one time a long, long time ago. Um, oh yeah, actually, I have a couple things that happened to me. Yeah, yeah. Here's a like, like I have a couple things that I don't know how spinal tapish this is, but like a couple good stories that come to mind. It, you know, because this just happened to me last week, and then it happened like one time I was playing a show in New York. You know, out on Long Island, and I, you know, I'm playing with, you know, I have like a Marshall stack there, but I have two heads stacked on top of it, so a Marshall double stack, two cabs, two heads. So at the very end of the show, I started doing this Blackmore Hendrix thing where I was like rubbing my strat up against the, you know, scraping it up against the side of the cab, and kind of doing the Jimmy thing where I was kind of like, you know, like rubbing up against the cab, that cab a little, and the top head, the top Marshall came down, bashed me right, the, the, the corner of of it bashed me right in my right eye oh. and put a huge gouge over my right eye and like blood started spurting everywhere like you know like you know like a Monty Python movie <laughs> you know what I mean and so I had mean, this big gash over my eye that you know so uh so luckily it was the last tune and it was over but you know I had to get like you know I didn't need stitches but I needed needed to get some attention and bandaged up after the show so I thought that was pretty funny you know what I mean <laughs> You know, well, actually, actually, it was, you know, I guess it was, it was funny after it was over, but I had a bit, a bit of a black eye and like a little scar over by where my eyebrow is. But, you know, it's all in, a, in the name of metal and rock. What are you going to do? <laughs> right. It's all rock and roll, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, like blood all over, you know, so people were, you know, it was a small, once again, it was a small crowd, but I didn't care. I'm still going, you know, going nuts up there anyway. It doesn't matter if, like, you know, um, there's only a hand, you know. There's not a only a handful of people, and not a huge amount of people. It's still, you know, it's not like they deserve less of a show. That that's awesome, man. That's awesome that you you, you know you give 110 percent, no matter. Yeah, well, what, it's a, yeah. Well, I mean, either you're doing it or you're not. You know what I mean? It's like why fuck around? So awesome. That's awesome, man. That's a great attitude. Joe, what what do you got in the pipe, man? What 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 what, what what's going on in the future for Joe Stump? Uh, oh, what am I, you know, well, I've been playing, you know, I'm always playing live because in addition to my solo thing, I got, um, in addition to my solo thing, I play in like a Deep Purple tribute band, which I'm a huge Blackmore fanatic, so that, for me, that's awesome. And then I have like my own thing, like another Blackmore tribute where I play mostly rainbow stuff. So I've been playing, you know, between my solo thing and those two things, I've been playing live a ton. But as far as like, you know, real deal stuff, uh, you know, I got a new solo record that I'm finishing. And then, you know, Holy Hell's got, like, some significant things in the pipes. So um, so I'm in the process, you know, of re-recording all the guitars for the Holy Hell record. Oh, very cool. Uh, you know, I just did, you know, because the second Holy Hell record is um, is going to, you know, there's some, like I said, there's some significant stuff happening for the band, and the, and the record's going to, you know, so so I'm re-recording all the guitars for it because the, um, the the you know the previous label has the right not to the actual tracks but to the masters so uh, uh, so, so we had to retract the record so you know so I'm doing that and um, and Exorcism's doing another record and I you know I mean I don't really I'm not like you know, like um, Shabbos second the, the singer in that he's um, you know it's really his thing. And, you know, so I'm just rocking some solos on that. And, you know, he writes most of the riffs and stuff. He's a, you know, massive, like, you know, just like I love Rainbow and Purple, you love Sabbath like that. So, so you know, I'm recording some guitars for that. And then me and him have another project that's like a very Rainbow-esque kind of project that, um, you know, called Tower of Battle that, you know, we're going to be, you know, um, you know, once the dust settles and I do my solo record and I finish the Holy Hell stuff, you know, we got that in the pipes, and that's like, you know, this stuff's along the lines of like, you know, some of it's rainbowish, some of it's purplish, some of it's kind of Michael Shanker group stuff, you know, a couple like Ingvae's types of things. So, and that, those were all my tunes, so that's like more like my kind of thing. Cool, man. So, cool. so I got, yeah, I got all that stuff going on, you know, plus tons of live dates and stuff. So, you know, so, you know, certainly busy enough. Awesome. I was just gonna say, man, you you got you got a lot of coals in the fire, man. Do you, do you get a chance to sleep? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I managed to organize everything enough where it's where where you know I got everything fairly organized. But it's you know, and it's nice playing so much. You know, I mean, in addition to my 
day job, which is I'm a professor of met I'm the hard rock slash shred slash metal specialist at Berkeley College of Music on the guitar faculty. So, in fact, I'm still at work now. I just finished up. So, um, you know, but you can't beat that. I only work three days a week and don't have to go in until 12, 1 o'clock. So, oh, you know, geez, yeah. You know, exactly. So, so uh, you know, you can't beat that. You know, don't have to don't have to wake up, you know, I got into the, like I always say, whenever I, I'm on a tour and I got to wake up early, it's, you know, whether it's a flight or a, you know, lobby call or a bus call, it's like I get into this line of work so I don't have to wake up early, you know? That's awesome. And and you're doing something, you're, you're, you're teaching something you you love. Oh, yeah, like, like you know, it's all like high-level players and all shred stuff and all, you know, the, the, you know what I do, so, uh, so, you know, it's great. You know, I've been here a long time, like, you know, this is, I've been here since 93, so, uh, it couldn't be a cushier job. Awesome, awesome, Joe. Yeah, so what advice I would you have? Musician stuff for me. Cool. What advice would you have for the guys just starting out, man? Um. Well, I mean, you know, the, the thing I always say is like, I didn't get into guitar because you know I wanted to you know, meet chicks or be famous or travel the world or any of that nonsense. I got into it because you know because of the players and you know my heroes that inspired me and because I truly love it. And, you know, like, no matter how well you're doing, there's always going to be, you know, frustrating times and lean times. So, you know, but if you love it, you know what I mean, and and you're all in, then, you know, then it, it's all worthwhile. You know what I mean? So, so you know, so, so, you know, if you're in it, you know, you should be, you know, eating, breathing, and sleeping it. You know what I mean? And, and committed to it. If not, you know, do something else. Awesome, man. Awesome. You know, and I hear that time and time again, that if you're in it for the chicks or for the money, you're in it for the wrong reasons, because more often than not, there's no money to be made in the industry nowadays. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. well, you know, I mean, I mean, if that comes and goes, I'm actually, I can't complain, I'm fairly fortunate that between, you know, you know, the, you know for, for a guy that's like a bit more of a, you know, underground guy, um, to a certain extent, you know, I, I still, you know, I, I'm still able to go out and tour and, you know, and make some money, you know, and go on various places in the world. Like I just came back from Mexico. I did a tour there, you know, small tour, like five shows and five shows in three days kind of thing. So I go out and, you know, I go out and, you know, and tour and play and travel and stuff and then, you know, make some cash, you know, so I can't complain. Right, right. But I mean, this is something, this didn't happen overnight for you. I mean, this is something you, you, no, you no, earned. It's tough for, it's tougher for guys now starting out, but there's no exact science or exact roadmap. You know what I mean? If the music industry is just constantly changing. So it's like, you know, people say, well, what advice, you know, would you give to young players? Other than, you know, my thing is, you know, practice, love it, work hard, break your balls, and then something's good, good's going to come of it. You know what I mean? Awesome. Awesome. Joe, the song I want to play tonight, man. Uh, man, your battle stations. What can you tell us about the tune? Um, I got like tons of tunes on uh, like this one. This is like you know I, I always have like fast double bass, you know, fast you know burning double bass stuff on on a lot of my solo records. And um, and this is like you know you could you, you could go back to any of my records and there's always at least a few tracks like this on there. But it's got a, you know it's got some cool rip stuff. It's got an evil melody and of course it's got you know. More, more, more than um, you know, more fast guitar than you would have probably ever want to hear ever again. You know, what I mean? <laughs> once you listen to it, it'll be like, no, I think I, I you know, you, you might reach, you might have reached your threshold. Awesome, man, awesome, Joe. I want to thank you tonight for calling in, man, and hanging out with us for a little bit. It's been great. It was great. Thanks for having me. You know what I mean? Yeah, awesome, man. And, and everybody, you know, if you haven't checked out my stuff, please do. If you, you know, if you like guitar, then you know what I mean. <laughs> You know, you certainly won't be disappointed. Awesome. Joe, you're welcome back anytime again. Thank you, man. All right. Thanks for coming. Hang on one second, Joe. Listeners, check this out. Man, your battle stations for Joe Stump. I am just about out of time, so I will see you next week. As always, be safe. Stay well. Keep it metal.